What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing. Coming back at you with another video and today, my reef tank is four years old. That is insane. Let's jump into it and see what's going on with the tank. I absolutely love this view of the tank. It is so calm, so serene, and it just makes me feel better about everything. But there have been some ups and downs in this four year journey. I'm gonna do a quick overview of the tank talk about the livestock and then we'll go with equipment and things that I have found success with in the tank. Let's get started. So we'll address the elephant in the room. Dory. Now this Dory aka Rory is a replacement for my beloved Tang, Hippo Tang that died and you know she's doing pretty well in the tank. She's holding her own not so much like a officer like the other Tang was Dory would always be kind of like the one to keep the peace, but Rory's finding her home and doing a good job. And usually back here, I had all my Antheas. All my Antheas from the get-go were gone, so they lasted about three years in my tank, and they're just no longer with me, and I love those schooling fish. But I did add, you know, uh, it's like a Fiji damsel, and then a reef blue reef chromis wherever he went he likes to hide underneath this overhang and i love that he uses you know all the corals to kind of just make his little home in there he's in there you can't really see him but he's back there but all my captive bred fish have done really well you know we got the harp tail blenny over here rocking it the striped blenny is always full of you know personality and nemo and marina nemo and maria my designer clownfish always doing well this area that they host in there's one two three four different types of euphilia in here i mean it's just this is like a two foot by two foot area it's just taken over pearl my royal grama is just kind of hiding out back there yep mando the mandarin dragonette beautiful fish love this fish one of my prides and joy in my tank doing so well Unfortunately, I have to sit back here because that yellow coarse rust does not like it when I am up close. And for some reason, I'm not finding my Midas Blenny. It usually comes out later in the day, so I'm gonna be on the lookout for him and see if I can grab a video of him. So I'm about to do a water change and I've looked all throughout the tank and I cannot find the Midas Blenny. So I went back on multiple videos and I got to see Dory and everything and the Midas Blenny kind of went MIA when Dory had her incident and passed away. And I had been so caught up on Dory, I for neglected to even look for the other fish. So yeah, I'm guessing the Midas Blenny has been gone since around Dory's passing. And I've just been so focused on getting another Dory. And oh my God, that flame angel is nipping at the digis. Seriously? What are you doing, Flame Angel? What are you doing? Acting a fool? Nipping some coral? Are you why I don't have pop extension on some corals? But on to the corals. I've been really liking these, you know, button scullies or just general scullies. I mean, I, at this point in my tank, it's just overgrown with coral and I just don't want to prune any more coral. As you can see, I've kind of run out of room of where to put coral and I kind of just stuck this Miyagi tort on top of this chip pavona and then threw some, you know, just green acropora on top of some bird's nest that I need to kind of clear out. And then same with this uh, an acropora, kind of stuck that on top of some stylophora that I tried to kill, but apparently I didn't kill enough of it because it's hiding in the back. This, I believe it's Pink Cadillac? I am so bad with names. I just buy whatever looks pretty. I don't care about the names. This is just rocking it. I mean, it's looking so good. And then you have a BC Aquatic Man, I believe, right there. And then a Garf Bonsai. All of them are doing really well. You can kind of see pops are nice and fluffy on that one. I wish I had a better camera than a phone camera, but that Shades of Fall is just wonderful to look at. And then looking at the Octospawn here, green octospawn, peach king octospawn. You got the hammer coral here, your basic, you know, green with purple hammer. 
and a toxic green frog spawn bag that I've had for since, oh, there's the Mandarin looking good. I've had that frog spawn there since 2014, 15. Yeah, it's been a long time. And then that's a uh, fish of hexes, uh, hydrophora, hydnophora, yes, hydnophora. Just kind of threw it in the back. Same with uh, the candy cane or trumpet coral. Just kind of threw it back there. I don't have any room left in the tank. And Satosa right there with my Jedi mind trick that's kind of getting destroyed by all of these Euphilia. So this Duncan, I probably cut half of it off and that is still the size of a volleyball. I mean, it's just giant in the tank. Had it since 2014 from a single head. Grows out to this. One piece fell off down here about a year ago or two years ago. A single head and I just kind of stuck in the sand bed and it's grown to that. Just insane. Now, what to do with all these sun-kissed mushrooms? I've been kind of ripping them off the sand bed and selling them and trading them, um, but I had no idea that my uh, Micromusa merletis were getting taken over. I ripped a, a coral, or actually that mushroom, off of this. I had no idea I'd reached over and just killed all this. I didn't realize that this whole structure has just been covered up with all these mushrooms and <laughs> All this sponge has kind of grown underneath of it because all these mushrooms have choked out everything. I kind of need to do something about this in the future. I just don't know what to do. I don't want to get rid of it, but I don't know if it's time to hit a reset button or what. I guess I have a thing for LPS, but I love SPS and softies. I just love coral and that's what makes it hard because I don't think I see a coral that I don't like. I don't know. I've never seen a coral. I'm like, yeah, I'm never gonna take that coral. I would probably take any coral that someone gives me just because I love it. You know, this Lobo looking great. All my, uh, well, these are not A-cans. I actually uh, put my A-can in the very back because it kept stinging stuff. So these are Micro Musa Lord Hoensis and Barabankis, I believe. They're super big and fluffy. So they're doing really well. Loving them, put them over here. And unfortunately my Dragon Soul Favia, the big one, died kicked the can so i had this smaller colony which is still a giant colony bounce mushrooms and sun kiss mushrooms and some whatever these mushrooms are all kind of taking over the rock had to add that rock structure here because i needed more room for some coral and these guys are looking wonderful so i believe that is wwc heartbreaker something like that these two over here are just some random corals I got from an online vendor. You got the WWC yellow tip, which I had to break off because it was covering up all these corals and kind of stacked it on top of each other. So it's like a coral that's been double stacked. And then you got the uh, Cali tort. And that thing is just stupid big. I mean, it's breaching the surface of the water and getting algae on it because it's broken the surface so many times I've ripped it off and breaking it apart. It still grows like crazy. Probably my pride and joy is how well I've done with this Worldwide Corals Walt Disney. I mean, it's just, the camera doesn't do it justice because you can see the tips. I'll do a top down view and you can kind of see the tips a little bit better, but it's, it's actually kicking. It's doing wonderful. And then the strawberry shortcake, that thing is just going off right now. It is doing so well. So I think I finally got things dialed in with the tank. And the frag tank, it's still kicking. Still got that Hyger pump in there, doing pretty well. And I'm still dosing two part, uh, the bulk two part from BRS with A and K from Tropic Marin using my Red Sea Reef Dose, which, you know, I have uh, mixed feelings about. If I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But the containers are doing well and I still have to dose some nitrate solution because my nitrate and phosphate ratio always gets off. The vast calcster are still pumping with the Versa doser and doing about two and a half liters of calc a day in here. And then I'm also dumping in a gallon of Tropic Marion Part C, which I totally forgot to do for a, about a year when I ran out of it. But I put in a, a gallon of Tropic Marion Part C for the rolling solution uh, once a week. And then skimmer still kicking. Loving this thing. 
Reef Octopus, Regal uh, 200 space saving skimmer. Doing awesome, never had any problems with it. Um, still doing my quilt batting on top, pitching that out uh, every three to four days, and then that makes my filter socks last a week. So doing pretty good. Got the Miracle Mud in here. And running um, Fosgard and just some like bricks in a, a bag. Trying to stay away from using uh, carbon because I know it can pull out some trace elements and stuff and staying away from GFO. I'm only going to use that if levels get really crazy or if I have to calc paste stuff. But I try to limit my use of those chemicals just because you never know what else is pulling out of the water. As far as the flow, I got two max pack gyres, the XF350s with the cloud and those things have been doing really well for me. And then I still have the J-Bow in the back pumping it all the way across. It's like the SCP-150. I think that thing's on two years. I don't know, I am super impressed with some of these like quote unquote knockoff pumps like the J-Bows and the high gears. They are just, they're worth it, man. The price point is great. And then I have an Octopulse pulse pump holding onto this uh, J-Bow there because my Octopulses both died. Well, they didn't die, their cord started fraying, and I really wasn't comfortable keeping them in the tank. But I'm not really happy with that. My other Octopulse, like the Barrios pumps, and the skimmers were doing great. I just don't know if I'd ever buy a Reef Octopus, like Octopulse. I, I don't think it's really worth it. My T5 hybrid setup, I'm loving it. I love the T5, the blanket uh, coverage that I get from it. And with the three Radeon um, XR15s, they're like, what, the G5s? Yeah, they're the G5 Blues. They're not pumping out too much. They're at like 60%. And I had the Red Sea Reflood 90. Did have an issue with this when there's a power outage. It kept the light on all night. And then this poor little Blasto back there just got nuked. These guys were okay, but this Blasto just didn't do well with that light being on all day and all night. So found that out in the morning when I woke up and put him into a like some cover just to, you know, protect him from any extra light, but he's not doing too hot. So you can see with my mounting options up there, I no longer have that reef bar um, from reef breeders. And, you know, I contacted them and they were gonna give me a deal on another one, but I only wanted it for, you know, a punch for the SPS up top, but I really don't think I need it. And honestly, I would probably do like an Ollie Express light bar instead, or maybe I would switch up to a Quanta bar or something like that in the future just to try something different, just to give you guys a view on if it's worth buying. But yeah, overall, lighting, super happy with it. So one of the things I wanna talk about is whenever I'm showing their tanks, they always show the bright sides. You've seen all my failures and all my successes. And, you know, for me to be here at four years, I think that's a success. I'm extremely critical of myself and I think I can do better and I'm hurting over Dory and I'm hurting over, you know, my Favia dying. And I had one of my Scullies that's gotten, I don't know, stung somehow. I don't know how it got stung and it's about to die. But overall, like nature's gonna do what nature's gonna do. If you're gonna put corals from different depths in the ocean and different um, reefs in general from different parts of the world all together in a tiny box and you're gonna expect it to be perfect and you're not gonna have to do anything and you're not going to have any losses and all the fish are gonna be from different parts of the ocean. I mean, you're, you're asking for trouble. I mean, this isn't a biotope. This is not, you know, a piece of Bali. This is like Mike from Shallow Reefing decided to grab a bunch of corals he thought were cool and throw it in a box and hope everything turns out all right. And so far, it's turned out pretty well. And I'm really grateful that I'm here after four years. And I'm just really wanting to show you guys like, yeah, I've had successes along the way and this has been really successful, but I've also had failures. As you can see with that scully back there, that's not in frame because I want you to see these scullies that I really like. I want you to know that it's gonna be okay Whatever you do in this hobby, just try to better yourself each and every day and do a little bit better and make sure that you're doing what's best for the tank, not what's best for you. I like to think of keeping it simple, making it as easy as possible because if things are easy, you're gonna take care of it. 
and I'm really hoping that I can be here four years from now and maybe even, you know, at that 10 year mark, hopefully at that 10 year mark, I'll probably end up shutting down the tank because I just am way too paranoid with a tank with 200 gallons of water that's 10 years old. Speaking of coral, that coral in the back, it's a scully that, okay, the Blenny's face is right by it. There's like a little coral coming off of that and it legitimately looks like it's a pulsing zinnia and I don't have pulsing zinnia in my tank. I have no idea what that is. I'm legitimately gonna keep this like clip in here and then we'll see what that turns into in a couple months to years. But this might be the start of something new. Hmm. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time. If you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click the subscribe button. Also, if you've been here since like the first year and you're still sticking in and tuning in to seeing what I have to say about my tank, thank you. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you next time.